Good afternoon, everyone. So I have the honor of going first right after lunch. Please don't fall asleep. Um, I am going to try not to bore you. I'm going to keep it short and uh, hopefully entertaining. So my name is Farah, and I'm from an organization called AMSA out in BC. We are an umbrella agency for all the settlement and language service provider organizations. So very similar to ACASI out here in Ontario. I have to remember to change my slide. I actually even write it down so I don't forget. Uh, so we celebrated our 40th anniversary just in September. We're very proud of that. And we currently have over 70 member agencies who work towards newcomer settlement and cultural inclusion. And here is a little bit about what we do. We have um, a weekly feature called SettlementNet or SetNet, which anybody can sign up for. It's a list of media clippings across the country, interesting stories, trends that are occurring. Um, and currently we have, I think it's over 1,100 um, registrants for that. We also produce an info sheet, which is called Migration Matters. And we, some of our activities include online videos, webinars, and e-symposia on uh, some of the important topics or topics that our members really want to hear about. And we also have a Cultures West magazine that comes out twice a year, again, on different topics. Our next one is going to be on literacy, which uh, will be out probably in December. Okay. So again, we offer training and capacity building for the sector. So today, the topic I would like to focus on is the role of nonprofit and community organizations in addressing public anxiety about immigration. What I'd like to do is share a few success stories from BC. Now, we all know that there is a lot of anxiety about immigration, but there are also lots of everyday people who want to support immigration and diversity and are working to deliver that in a variety of ways. For example, most community organizations were just completely overwhelmed by the numbers of people wanting to volunteer and help out during the resettlement of Syrian refugees, and agencies could not accommodate all the requests. So that's just some evidence of how many people out there really do want to make Canada a welcoming and inclusive place. Now, in our regional breakouts, uh, we were discussing this morning that there are perhaps different attitudes to the different segments of, of newcomers that come in. Uh, there might be more empathy towards refugees. Uh, there might be a little bit more resistance towards uh, uh, people who come in on sort of the usual pathways um, for fear of, you know, they're taking our jobs or they're, um, you know, taking our, our resources or why are things available to them that are not available to us. So we did explore that a little bit at the regional breakout. Um, so I do want to mention that here. So for member agency success stories, uh, community organizations are often the first to notice the shifting attitudes and their long-standing relationships in their communities can offer a lot of potential for addressing public anxiety. The first story I want to share with you comes from a metro van organization called Success. They initiated a couple of programs to address public anxiety about immigration. They held a community forum to open discussions on anti-immigrant sentiment and the forum stood against the recent incidents of racial discrimination towards immigrants and also exposed their impact on newcomers, immigrants, but also longtime residents. You know, it does have an, have an impact on everybody. And this forum uh, had over 200 attendees, for, uh, leaders, members of the community, who participated in a reaffirmation of shared values and acknowledged the historic contribution of immigrants to the prosperity of BC. Oh, sorry. 
Um, the second initiative, Success Chuck, is a series of roundtables called All of Our Neighbors. So this series of discussions explored this intersectionality of neighborliness and diversity and provided opportunities for people to share their thoughts and their concerns in a public forum. So it was a, you know, it was a safe space. They, they made sure that people could say what they wanted without judgment, uh, and it was very, very well received. The last, uh, and I don't have it on the slide, but the, the last initiative by Success is a documentary and oral histories video project that features interviews with well-known and respected immigrants in BC about the value of newcomers and the contributions of immigrants to our communities. This will be an engaging way to um, include, uh, sorry, it, was, it will be a way to engage communities and include high school and post-secondary students to better understand the important role of immigrants in building our communities. So we're looking forward to that video coming out shortly. The next success story I'd like to focus on is um, from a rural organization in BC. It's called the Immigrant Welcome Centre, and they serve um, areas uh, Campbell River, Comox Valley, and the North Island. So there is a political venue that was initiated about four or five years ago called Philosopher's Cafe, where they discuss current issues. They bring in local experts uh, in the area to discuss and facilitate the session. Jim Brennan, who is the executive director of Immigrant Welcome Center, was invited as the local expert to discuss immigration. And the topic was, should we build walls or bridges? And I just want to read out the actual ad that was placed in the paper to bring people in, because I think it actually states some of the real life sentiment out there. So the ad states, unless you are one of the 4% of Canadians who are Indigenous, you come from an immigrant background. In much of Europe and in the US election, immigration has been a contentious theme. In Canada, we have welcomed refugees and have announced a gradual increase in the number of immigrants we hope to admit. Why would Canada do that? Is there a reason to oppose immigration generally? Perhaps it's just certain groups of immigrants that cause unease. Is there racism involved or concern about competition for jobs? Do some feel their culture is threatened by diversity in our community? What support should be offered to new Canadians? Should they be treated like any Canadian or should special attention be made to ensure they succeed here? Attendees offered views ranging from immigration's economic impact to culture and jobs, as well to the immigration process and what requirements are necessary for immigrants to come to Canada. Over 100 people attended this session, which I'm told is, is very good for that region. It was very well received. Another successful program in Campbell River is called the Mythbusters Campaign. The purpose of the project was to end stereotypes about immigrants, combat discrimination with facts about immigration, and increase cross-cultural communication in Campbell River. This model was actually appropriated from Barcelona, Spain, where it was hugely successful. In fact, in Campbell River, the campaign was so successful, it was renewed for another year. Another campaign was the Miss Mythbusters Action Team. And that was a program where Campbell River residents could become Mythbuster agents by using practical skills to respond to discrimination in the community. The program involved three free courses, topics which included anti-discrimination response training, cross-cultural communication, and breaking stereotypes. In addition to receiving a certificate after completing each workshops, 
agents, as they were called, received a pin as a recognition of their commitment. And this program was also very well received. So those were a few of the success stories I wanted to tell you about. We also, I talked to uh, some of the Metro Vancouver uh, local immigration partnerships a couple of weeks ago, and you know they also stated how they're very well positioned to take on the public anxiety piece about immigration with their partnerships in the community. And looking at intersectionality approaches. Uh, yesterday, I also attended the workshop, and it was interesting to see what the other provinces are doing, um, for example, with the Toronto for All and the Hamilton for All campaigns. And I believe it was yesterday's plenary that uh, Corey Wilson from BC talked about what the city of Vancouver is doing as well. But it would really be interesting to see sort of a BC for All campaign. I'm going to take that back with me. So what has AMSA done as an umbrella agency? We did hold a forum on anti-racism and anti-hate initiatives, supporting the integration of refugees in our communities. And that was back in February. We had an online, um, it was an online tool, and I think it was about 700 people from across the province that attended that session. That was the largest one that we had had. So this is something that everybody is thinking about. It's on everybody's mind. As I mentioned, we offer webinars and e-symposia. Um, we produce info sheets. We also participate in different uh, research initiatives. And we are constantly looking for ways to support our members. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the presentation, just quick and dirty. Uh, thank you, everybody, for paying attention and not falling asleep. Uh, check us out on our website, amsa.org. We are also on Twitter, at AMSABC. I hope the information was useful and informative, and I look forward to any questions you might have. Thank you.